Frank here and today we're doing a little bit uh, of a different job than we typically do but I've been working on automobiles my whole life but we have a Jeep Liberty here and it's a 3.7 liter V6 and what was happening was some oil seems to be dripping down onto the exhaust down below and by the location of it, it appears to be uh, valve covers. So that's what we're doing. And we're going to have to remove some things uh, before I pull it into the garage. I'm going to do additional work in the garage, but what I'd like to do out while it's outside is maybe drain some of the fluid. And we need to remove this uh, fan guard here. There's going to be a Kind of a small bolt in the front on the left and one on the right and this should come off and then we have this connection here now, typically there's a red tab here and then you just stick a pointy you stick a pointy tool into the end of it so that will come come loose uh, there's a lot of things we're going to have to remove here we're going to have to remove the air box uh, which just has some rubber type grommet on the bottom so that that will pull out once we uh, detach this part of it from the intake uh, we're going to have to remove these lines that go into your heater core which is underneath this reservoir here so we're gonna have to empty that out uh, so I'm going to do some of the preliminary stuff here um, and I'll show you as much as I can uh, but I'm going to start with removing this fan guard um, and then unhooking the two connections down below. I don't know if we could... It's going to be these two and they're just clamps that I'm going to have to squeeze together and slide back and see if I can't drain some of this fluid out so I'm not making a mess in the garage but I am going to use a pan and catch as much of it as I can. Uh, so I'm going to move on with uh, removing this stuff and then when I get it in the garage we'll get into the nitty-gritty of uh, getting to these valve covers. And I do have the replacement ones uh, with new gaskets and I did notice these ones are metal. Now the new ones are like a plastic <coughs> excuse me like a plastic. Uh, this is a 2004. I have a 2005 Jeep and mine has like the hard plastic. I don't know what the material that they they make it out of, but it, probably the same material they do make this intake manifold out of. But we'll get to it, and uh, we'll see you shortly. Okay, so the first step is we have a 10 millimeter uh, small socket, and there's going to be two bolts, one on the left and one under this hose on the right. So I've already removed those with the 10 millimeter socket. And then what you want to do is work the, you know, it's a little tricky at first because this is under this lip here. This is a little larger fan shroud than I have on my Jeep. Uh, it's a little bit different. This one's wider. So once you push it forward, it's going to lift out. And you want to clear your hose out of the way and work it out. So there we have it. Now it's a good time to get in there and lubricate your fan and check everything out. Maybe give it a good wash before you put it back in. So that's it for this step. So let's move on to the next step. All right, the next step we need to do is we need to take this hose off so we can remove this air box. And this is what, where the air goes into your intake here. So we'll start here. It's just a simple clamp on each side. You don't have to remove it completely. And we're just going to there's a connector here we're going to unhook. So 
Sometimes they're easy, sometimes they're not. There we go. There's our one connector, which which looks like a sensor that goes there. We'll pull that end off, and there we have our one piece. Now we're going to work on this air box. Should just lift out of here. It might take a little bit of a struggle, but first we need to unhook this line that's going in the side of it. So we unhook that line there, and you want to be careful with this stuff because it's just plastic. If you if you force this in any direction and that breaks, you're going to have to replace these these plastic lines. Uh, so. We're going to try our best just to move it off to the side here. And there is nothing else here, so we should be able to pry this air box out of here. There's one side. There's two. So as you can see, where the bottom, bottom of this kind of pops in. This is plastic and these are rubber. So it's probably a good idea while you're in here to clean this all up before you put everything back together. That's what I like to do. Like anything like bolts like this, you know, could put some grease on them, white lithium grease. You got a brake line here that you could probably uh, put some white lithium, you know, prevent some rust. So. We have a little bit more room to work now, so we're going to move on to the next step. Alright guys, so we have a lot more room here to work with, uh, but we're still not done. We are going to have to remove this oil filler. There's going to be three, uh, looks like three bolts down below. We're probably going to get a new gasket for that before it gets put back on. Um, we have what it looks like a PCV valve here that's going to have to be removed that's attached to this plastic line which again you got to be very careful with you don't want to break that plastic line the vacuum lines so what we're going to do here is I'm just going to move a 10 millimeter socket and I've already loosened these just to make it easier so we can remove this reservoir here for the uh, antifreeze and any hoses set them off to the side uh, we do have this hose too, but I'm going to need to get some pliers unless I can get that with my hands. That's a little tough. I'll just set it off to the side and get to that afterwards. Because we're going to have to probably let this clamp loose here to empty this reservoir so we don't make a mess. But we can set this Yeah, probably be a good idea if I I unhook that so I'm going to do that now I'm going to get some pliers and we'll get this unhooked and then we'll let loose this clamp here and we'll drain this into a can uh, hopefully you know I'll use a larger can like a kidney bean can or something and that should be enough to catch all that okay let me get my pliers and we'll move on to the next step all right guys so the next step we want to drain this out you know we want the least mess possible I'm going to take this clamp off I've already loosened up a little bit and you know regular pliers whatever doesn't matter you're squeezing this together and sliding it back it's similar to a fuel line on a lawnmower and then you're going to drop your pliers down on the ground don't worry about that and we're going to pull that hose out and kind of set it aside now I have my kidney bean can and I also have another container here to catch anything that if it exceeds the uh, capacity of this which I really don't think it will. We're just going to set this underneath as best we can here and we're going to get at this big clamp down here. We're going to do the same thing. We're just going to slide the clamp down out of the way. For these hoses, it's best to turn them first. You know, don't ever try to just tear the hose off. Because a lot of times it's stuck there, and you're going to rip the hose. So I'm turning it first to free it up. Then I'm going to get my can ready. We 
can see it's filling up fairly quickly. Are we going to make it? I don't think so. But it's okay. There's going to be a little bit of a mess. Boy, I really underestimated the capacity of that uh, reservoir. But I'll probably just get a hose here and after I'm all done and clean all this up. Uh, but that's just par for the course. You're going to get, you know, things like that are going to happen. You're going to get leaks and it's the way it goes when you're working on cars. So it looks like that's it. We have the last of our reservoir fluid in there. And now we can remove the reservoir. And it's probably a good idea what I'm going to do too is clean all this up. I'm going to flush this reservoir out. Uh, you can see it's pretty dirty inside and outside. Uh, but that's one of the things we'll do. So now that we have that removed we have exposed the heater core inlet and outlet hoses which have the same type clamps as we've just removed. And if all goes well and we remove the two clamps down below here, we're going to of course get more spillage, but we're going to be able to pull this whole unit, these lines out, which will free up a lot of space so we can get to the uh, valve cover. So my next step is I'm going to undo these hoses up here. So stick around. All right, so our next step is I'm going to remove these hoses from the engine below here and I can tell you it's a lot easier to get to this stuff once everything's gone. Uh, so once we get these two out, then we're going to work on getting these two out and this whole hose assembly should come out. So I'm going to start here at the bottom and I do have a uh, catch pan below. But first I want to get these clamps, they're the same kind of clamps, just squeeze them together and pull them up as far as you can. So there's one. You get your pliers out. And we'll work on the next one. the right angle there because there isn't a whole lot of room down below here. I'm going to slide it up. Might have to adjust the pliers, get a little better of a squeeze on that. When I put these back on, I'm going to put these facing a different way, just so it's easier if I have to do this again. All right, there we go. We slid that clamp up. Now I'm going to do the same procedure with these hoses. I'm going to try to turn them before I pull them off. And we'll start with the lower one. I know it's, you can't really see. So I'm twisting the hose and it's turning. The more I turn it, the more free it is, which that's what you want. So I'm going to try to pull this out now. And there we go. Now we're going to get a lot more fluid coming out of here. You can see that just pouring out of there. I do have the container. You can see it just pouring out of there. And now I'm going to try the other one. Same thing, I'm going to turn it first. I 
to free it up first before you pull it off. That's turning real good, so I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to pull on it. That one actually might be easier if it is turning and it is pulling up. But because I have this uh, kind of a brace here that attaches to a, you know, it pulls out. Maybe we could get enough clearance to pull it out, but I think the best thing to do is I'm going to work on getting these two off first. And then we should be able to pull this whole thing out. Okay, so the next thing you want to do is just be careful of this, uh, this PCV valve here that goes uh, hooks up to the oil filler and uh, what you want to do is just hold this area not too hard because it's plastic and then get another pair of pliers and turn this hose off and I did get it almost off let's see there we go so that's off now this is the plastic vacuum line you got to be real careful manipulating this thing because it could crack so it does turn there so I was able to turn it and we're going to put this hose off over here so now what we do is to get this valve off you can kind of push in and turn it down and pull it out and it does sound okay usually if you don't hear that sound in there it has to be replaced but it's probably a good idea for a couple bucks while you're putting it back together to just replace it so the next thing we're going to do is pull the final hose out from the bottom and this assembly here should come out. And now we can pull away this original uh, bracket here from this uh, screw that's sticking out. And kind of manipulate Manipulate it out of there like so. And there we have it. There's our uh, coolant assembly that goes to the heater core. So we have a lot more room here to work. There are a couple more things we're going to have to do. Probably, uh, I don't know that we're going to have to remove these coils, but we'll probably have to remove these coil wires and this uh, harness here and move it off to the side but we're almost we almost have access to this cover and uh, I think I'm gonna continue with this tomorrow and I appreciate you guys watching so far I hope this video is helping you out if you have the same issue the same uh, Jeep Liberty and uh, we'll see you when we get back to it tomorrow okay so in doing this job I had found you can see where my pointer is all of this uh, wire conduit is uh, falling apart now this vehicle did have an issue with a burning smell and I'm thinking you know because we were wondering where is this burning smell coming from but well, it's quite possible that fragments of this stuff that's falling apart is falling on the motor and burning because it did smell like plastic burning so if anyone has that issue and you've checked everything else you know go ahead and check these uh, the plastic conduits that go on these wires and if they are crumbling, just replace them because the stuff is cheap. So basically every wire under here has that uh, crumbling conduit on it. So I'm going to go ahead and replace that first before I even do the gaskets. Because uh, what I don't want is when I take these off and I'm trying to manipulate them and fragments of this are falling off into the valves. You don't want that so I'm going to correct that first even before I remove the valve covers and uh, I'm not going to do a video on that but I'll go ahead and do it and then I'll show you the finished product when it's done okay so as you can see I've replaced most of the uh, wire insulation here I've got another area to do here but I'm going to focus on this uh, valve cover here first so I'm not worried about that yet, but I did do redo all the wiring on that side. So that looks good, but we are going to have to remove this oil filler. And there are four 8mm bolts 
with the top left one having a longer shaft on the end. And that's mainly for these wire, uh, there's these clips there that go over those longer screws. So the order of these long screws are important because that's what uh, fastens the wiring harness in place. So just have to remember, now I made a drawing just so I remember long, 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 short, short. Uh, so when I'm putting it back together, I'm not going to have any problems. But I'm going to remove this oil filler and then we can actually begin with removing the valve cover. Okay, so I've removed the uh, oil filler. It wasn't too difficult. Uh, gasket looks good on there, so I don't think I'm going to replace it. I'm going to just clean it up. Okay, so we have all the bolts loosened up, and I'm going to attempt to pry this thing loose. Let's see if we can't get this thing out of here. Well, it did come loose. it out. And you can see that's pretty cool stuff there. We got the we got the timing chain and the valves. Alright so that wasn't too bad to get off. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a rag and I'm gonna clean around the edge the entire edge of where the uh, cover is going to go. Now it's not like it was back in the day where you had the cork gaskets and they would stick to the surface. You'd have to get a razor blade and scrape it off. The surface of that looks pretty clean so I'm just going to run around it, uh, clean it up with a rag. Then we have the new valve cover here. Now this isn't an original uh, Jeep valve cover. It's an aftermarket one. Okay so I fed in the valve cover in this way. I did have to lift up on this hose just a little bit uh, to, to kind of squeeze it in there. But we do have it almost in position. Uh, so now there's just a little more positioning I have to do. And then we'll tighten down the bolts. Alright, so I got it in. I have my 10 millimeter uh, deep socket for the long ones. Um, I'm going to just start tightening these in kind of like a star pattern. Uh, go down the line, crisscross, tighten her down. And uh, we're either going to work on the other side or I can begin to put the air box and things back in on this side. I'm not sure what I'm going to do yet there, but uh, my goal is just to get this one in and then uh, I'm going to go from there. Alright guys, so here we are with this Jeep Liberty Limited 3.7 liter engine and I've corrected a lot of the, uh, you can see the uh, conduit for all the wiring that I've replaced. It's always a good thing if you notice something like that to take care of it. You know, I've seen videos where people have replaced the valve covers and I see bare wires here and they don't make mention of of it at all. It's pretty important. Uh, and as I said, it's probably the source of uh, the burning smell issue that was happening here. It was a mysterious issue. Um, there was no fluids that were leaking anywhere, burning off. Uh, and it didn't happen all the time. It was kind of like a random thing. Uh, the main issue with this one was an oil leak uh, that was on the ground and I did notice it dripping on the um, manifold below the catalytic converter uh, and by putting cardboard underneath over time kind of studying uh, the drips and it appeared it was coming from the rear of the uh, valve cover so that's what prompted this job uh, this isn't my vehicle I have a Jeep uh, Liberty as well it's a uh, 2005. Uh, it does not have ABS and I notice on this one that's going to be a little bit of challenge for for doing this side here. As you can see in here you have the right in here the ABS unit. So 
so you don't have much space, but I think I can get away with using using this swivel adapter here. Pretty handy thing, the swivel adapter. Uh, a 10 millimeter deep socket, 3 8 inch drive. Um, probably be able to get to that pretty easy. I'm going to have to pull up these. That's why, again, I'll mention the longer screws are for these attachments here that kind of hold the wires in place. I still have to do this, uh, repair this wire. I've done all the rest of them, but this all fell apart, uh, which could easily drop down to that manifold there, the exhaust, and burn off, and it just smelled like plastic every once in a while. So it might help you out if you had that issue too while you're watching the video or you know someone else because I've seen it a lot in the uh, a lot of posts where people were inquiring about this burning smell you know it's a pretty mysterious problem with the Jeep so you know if you're having that problem and you squeeze one of these uh, you know the, the plastic uh, conduit and it's falling apart more than likely you know, it could be dropping on the engine and burning. So, I do have a vacuum and I'm also going to blow it out. But I see some particles from the work I did, you know, on top of the motor. I'm going to have to clean that up. Uh, but, we have our plastic hosing here. And this goes into the air box on the side of it. <clears throat> and we have to mount still these hoses into the ports. I don't know if you see it. Right there there's one and then there's one on the other side and these hoses go into it. But there's an order of operation so if I'm gonna do that driver's side which makes perfect sense you know you wouldn't change one light bulb. We're gonna we gotta complete the job so I'm gonna leave this off for now. Uh, which means we can't hook up the coolant lines yet um, and put any coolant in there because this line here actually goes underneath that so it doesn't make sense to even proceed there so I'm going to uh, the next step is I'm going to take that uh, driver's side valve cover off and so we can replace that now the lighting here I'm using is just a fluorescent light and it works out well because I've always had issues where it's just not enough light when I'm working and it's just some bungee cords the rubber ones and there are holes in the hood and it hooks up perfectly As you can see it gives me a good amount of light uh, so that might help you out too uh, because I know a lot of the work lights you buy is just you know they're nice but they don't give you enough light you know so you might have something like this laying around already that you can uh, utilize uh, so I've been going around and just kind of lubricating all any bolt that I see it's always good for the future when you're gonna work on something you know it's gonna be easier to get off later and just inspecting everything uh, but this project is about the valve covers you know, and obviously anything else that I find that needs attention. But I just want to thank all the subscribers. Uh, I've been getting like a couple subscribers a day. And it's really cool that you guys like to watch uh, me fix stuff. I do it too. You know, I'll get on YouTube at night usually. And just lay in bed and watch people fix stuff. It's much funner than actually fixing it myself. So I understand where you're coming from. I thank you for watching the channel. And we're going to be back and tackle this uh, uh, next stage here, which is going to be the driver's side valve cover. And uh, get this thing running, put everything back together, and hopefully it's not going to leak. And uh, stay tuned. Okay, so moving on to the driver's side, uh, I found that the swivel ratchet, the swivel adapter doesn't really work well. It's not very effective. Uh, most of the time you can just use the small extension and the uh, 
10 millimeter socket and also eliminating the extension and just using the uh, socket itself depending on which uh, bolt that you're getting off on that valve cover. Uh, what I'm going to do too is I'm going to remove the you have the coils here obviously three coils on each side one coil for each cylinder and the fuel injection you have your fuel bar here and the fuel injector connections here and I think it would be best to remove uh, those connections and it's not hard to do you just press just press down and pull back on these and there's the coils and you can do the same with the fuel injector connections uh, sometimes they have a red tab you know a lot of these connections here have the red tab and you just want to slide the tab back and then press and sometimes you'll have to use needle nose pliers to press it and release it so we'll release that from the uh, connector there and we'll release that from the throttle body and I also release the hose the vacuum hose that's going into here and there is a purge purge valve here uh, for the emissions and uh, and that mounts right there and I lifted it off and kind of set it off to the side I think that'll be good I don't know that we're going to have an issue with the fuel line I don't want to remove that if I don't have to uh, or the power steering pump here um, I'm hoping that if I loosen those bolts I'll be able to lift it out with these wires out of the way here you know I have another fuel two fuel injector connectors to to undo and then I'll be able to push those wires off to the side and hopefully that'll give us enough room to lift up the valve cover and remove it and manipulate it out uh, but that's what we're going to do next uh, I think that's the best thing to do is just unhook the wires you can inspect the uh, the conduit you can even clean your connectors while you're there uh, it's always a good thing to do check the connectors out all the wiring uh, make sure it's all good the tape is good and uh, I think it's the best thing to do in this scenario on this side uh, it doesn't take long to disconnect those connectors move them off to the side rather than risk damaging any of the wiring uh, this particularly for your injectors and the coils there so it's moving along here um, I don't know if I mentioned it before but I did hook up the uh, oil filler it's got the four bolts and the one top left one is longer uh, and that's going to be because the uh, coolant lines get mounted to that and the last bolt uh, towards the rear of the uh, towards the firewall there right back there is going to be a long one that the uh, coolant lines mount to on on that side so there's two mount plastic pieces that kind of just go over that long shaft to kind of hold it in place uh, so it's coming along uh, we're going to get to these connectors. You don't have to worry about disconnecting them. They're different. So they're very unique to where they fit. So I don't think you're going to forget you know, where these go, where these connectors go. It's pretty easy. And this one goes into the, uh, it's going to be a, I think it's a map. It's a sensor that's going to go into the, uh, the air tube that runs off of the air box. Um, that we're going to hook up later uh, hook that back up later and uh, so that's where we're at and uh, we'll continue it by
continuing to loosen those bolts all around the valve cover. You know, uh, I've gotten to most of them uh, without, you know, it wasn't too much effort getting it off. Uh, but we're going to loosen the rest of them and hopefully that will lift out and we can continue with the job, get that valve cover on and we'll assemble everything back again and start her up and hopefully we don't have any leaks and uh, or smells from you know breaking pieces of plastic from these uh, wire protectors uh, so we'll get to that next alright so we've got all our fuel injector and uh, coil connections disconnected I did go around and uh, loosen all the bolts up all around the valve cover and I've just got a bungee cord kind of pulling back the wiring uh, to keep it out of the way so I'm just gonna get this pry bar in here and just pry up a little bit on this valve cover okay so we were successful and that's a good thing we were able to get the valve cover off uh, we did not remove the fuel line it was just a matter of turning it off to the side and kind of just carefully manipulating it out. You know, you got to work at it for a few minutes, but, you know, it shouldn't be a problem getting it out. Uh, with the new one, I have new bolts all the way around, so these won't be an obstruction issue. I think what I'll do is just get the gasket put on the new one, and... Uh, once I place it in there, then I'll go around and place the uh, all the new screws in there because this kit did come with all the new screws. Um, it's a. I'm trying to see the. I'll try to get the uh, what the name of these valve covers are, the manufacturer, and post them um, down below. Uh, also, I'd like to hear about your recent repair experience uh, whether it's a Jeep or you know whatever it is but uh, what's the recent thing that you repaired on your Jeep uh, it's probably a good uh, thing to ask curious about that and I hope the video is helping you out uh, we, we've exposed the uh, chain and the valves and we're gonna prepare the new cover throw it on here and uh, hopefully we're not going to have any leaks and then we can actually start reassembling uh, all the other components to the motor the cooling system hose uh, the rest of the vacuum lines here and uh, so yeah thanks for joining me uh, you know I, I enjoy doing the videos uh, hope you learned something from it and uh, I'm going to continue with this shortly and uh, so stick around okay so we've tightened the valve cover down and uh, hopefully we won't get any leaks there now we're going to go ahead and just reverse what we had done before I'm going to put the uh, purge valve back uh, I'm going to hook the vacuum line uh, back into the throttle body there we're going to hook up these uh, vacuum lines we've got one connection on the right large hose and one on the left they do not take clamps they just uh, go into the fittings at the uh, rear of the motor and we also have the coolant the coolant lines that we'll have to put back in there you've got two connections coming out of the firewall and then down below you can see those two right there and those do have the slide clamps and what I'm doing is I cleaned up you know the air box we cleaned up the reservoir for the coolant uh, I like to do a detailed job everything's cleaned up and then while I'm in here I'm doing an oil change because with the fan guard removed the filter is super easy to uh, access right there so I figure why not get that out of the way. So that's what we're working on now. We're just going to get it back together. And uh, we'll fill up the coolant. 
and go from there. Okay, so we changed the oil. You can see that brand new blue filter down there. We've hooked up all of our uh, fuel injector connectors. Uh, we also took care of the insulation here on the side of the engine that was rotted out and we took care of that. Uh, we also mounted the uh, the vacuum lines here and this part's going to go into the air box when we put that in and we also put in the uh, coolant lines uh, which is going to slide underneath uh, that hose there so it's getting there I think the next thing I'm going to do is mount the reservoir for the coolant uh, we'll put the air box back in get everything back together fill it up uh, with some antifreeze and uh, it's almost time to run it and uh, it's been going good so far you know a couple snags here and there but uh, you know I will say your legs and the back of your legs at least for me hurt when I'm working over it might be this vehicle because it's taller but I'm tall so the back of my legs are just killing me but I'm working through it I've been doing it off and on for the last couple days we're almost done uh, so let's get to the next step okay so we have the reservoir here and there's a hose connection at the bottom that we reaffixed there took care of that and we're gonna mount this up I always leave the whatever screws I can leave in place so that when I come back to it the screws are there I'm not looking for screws so that's at least what I do I just put them where they belong and uh, they don't get lost that way so I'm going to mount that up there and then we have a hose here it's going to go into there and we'll slide that clamp over and we should be able to fill it up but I'm going to put the air box in there first uh, so let me mount that up and get the air box in there and uh, see what happens alright everything's back together um, I might probably have to add more uh, antifreeze to it so as it's uh, the water pumps turning and everything's going that level is probably going to go lower and so we'll top it off uh, but looks like it's good to go all the wires are connected uh, took care of any issues that I had saw while I was working on it so we're going to fire it up now and uh, hopefully we're not going to have any leaks and it's going to run good so let's go ahead and do it Alright guys, so overall it's it's running great. There's no leaks anywhere. Uh, there was a little smoke in the beginning, but that was just from when I had taken the valve covers off. Uh, it's a little more of an involved job than it used to be when I was younger because the engines were open. You didn't have all of these uh, obstructions on the top of the motor. Uh, but it, overall it wasn't too bad. I mean, a lot of things you have to remove from the top. Uh, but we did it and I hope it helped you out and uh, if you like the video hit like subscribe I appreciate all the new subscribers and uh, we'll see you next fix